Hi, welcome to yet another episode of ENT Talks. And today we continue with our series of talks on tracheostomy. In fact, in the previous episodes, we discussed about tracheostomy. We discussed in brief about its indication. We discussed certain aspects of tracheostomy decannulation, when it can be done. So today, I would just throw light on tracheostomy tubes. So when you have, when you talk about tracheostomy, an important part of tracheostomy is obviously the tracheostomy tube, the type of tube that you select. So in general, we have two types of tubes. One is the metallic tubes and the other one is the non-metallic tubes. Now, metallic tubes are generally very cheap. However, it does not serve all the purpose. When you talk about non-metallic tubes, you have a whole array or a range of tubes to select from. And these non-metallic tubes have so many added features. For example, these tubes have what is called as a cuff. A cuff or a balloon is basically inflatable part just outside the tube. So once the tube is inserted into the trachea, then you can kind of inflate this cuff and seal the trachea properly. Now the advantage of having a cuff is if the patient requires assisted ventilation or ventilatory support. So when you want to give positive pressure ventilation, there shouldn't be any air leak so that all the oxygen or the air that is delivered through the tracheostomy tube goes all the way into the lung. Two, let's think about a situation where the patient has a tendency to aspirate. So aspiration is something where when the patient eats or drinks accidentally the food material trickles down into the airway. Now this is something that shouldn't happen. Now what happens if the patient continues to aspirate, the patient lands up with pneumonia. So in those situations, to protect the airway, you can kind of keep the cuff inflated when the patient is feeding. So this option is available with non-metallic tubes. Metallic tubes generally don't have a cuff option. So if you want to connect to a ventilator, it is difficult to use a metallic tube. Similarly, if you want to prevent aspiration, it is not possible with a metallic tube. Apart from that, most of these tracheostomy tubes are dual tubes in, in the sense there is an outer tube and a smaller inner tube. Now the advantage of this is the patient can kind of maintain this at home. Now frequently because you have a foreign body in the trachea, the tracheostomy tube is obviously a foreign body in the trachea. So patients tend to have a lot of secretions and the tube tends to get blocked. So if the tube gets blocked, the patient will have respiratory distress. Now how do you overcome this? Because you have an inner tube, so any time the tube gets blocked, the patient or the bystander can remove the inner tube, clean it up and then put it back in. So this is something that can be done at home. And apart from that, because of this two tube concept and also something called as fenestration, where there are tiny openings on the surface of the outer tube and the inner tube, the patient can phonate with the tube in place. So one of the disadvantages that we spoke about earlier in early days with tracheostomy tube was that the patient probably would not be able to speak. However, the modifications in the uh, design of the tubes have made this possible. So depending on the situation, the scenario, the type of patient, what exactly is the requirement of that patient, we select the appropriate tracheostomy tube type and the size. Thank you.